Hello everyone and welcome to this new video on Power Query and Power BI. In this case, I really have a, a really interesting scenario and this is going to be for simulation purposes. We're going to be using Power Query and less.generate function. So my case is uh, really simple. I have this table of employees. I want to create a new query that will give me uh, what will be their next salary for the next 12 months. So I have uh, this increase salary uh, table. This is basically the global increase that each of them uh, are going to have. And I want to create something similar to something, for example, for Carlos. I want to create a 125 and I want to uh, find out uh, what will be their salary, for example, for the next first month, which is going to be uh, one plus f2 there we go so that's going to be for the first month that's going to be their increase this is going to be their new salary so for the next one we're going to be used using the value that we just calculated and multiply it times one plus g2 there we go and i'm just going to drag this across just like that and this is actually giving me what should be their next or the new salary for them. I want to be doing the same for uh, Carlos, which would be this one. And I'm going to, there we go. There we go. So now it's 150. What should be their next uh, salary? Uh, and and so far, you can actually do it for Miguel, for Pablo, and this should be the actual output that we're looking for. But instead of actually doing this manually, like I'm actually doing it right here, I want the the actual tool, Power Query, Power Pivot, Power BI, anything that can actually uh, give me this. And instead of actually being being done in in columns, I would like this to be. Uh, perform or be the output in rows instead of actually columns. So I went ahead and created a new uh, query from both of those tables. So I have in Power Query, those two queries. One is gonna be the actual employees table, which doesn't have any, uh, any, um, any new steps. It's just exactly how I imported that from just a table in Excel. But the monthly increase actually has a few new steps. The first one is on pivot other columns. And what I did here is just simply selected the category column and just chose the on pivot other columns. That actually gave me this table, this output category, attribute and value. The next step that I did is change the name of the attribute to be month. And then the month, it was text, now it's actually a whole number. And the reason why I did this is because I'm going to be using this query, this monthly increase for logical or this month column for some logic in my new list.generate function. So I'm going to select this monthly increase query. I'm just going to reference it. So I have this monthly increase too. I'm just going to call this my effects or testing for now and i'm gonna wrap this around the function table dot row count table dot row count is gonna count how many records that table has it's telling me that it has 12 records basically 12 rows now what i want to see now is a list dot generated function that gives me exactly what i manually created up here but in rows instead of as new columns. So as you can see, it actually has 13 columns. So the, the first one is the base uh, salary that I have, and then the increase for each of the next month. I want to do something similar to that. So I'm just going to hit that custom step, and I'm actually going to create my custom step. So the custom step is going to first start with the list.generate. And the first parameter or the first 
thing that you need to do when starting the list that generate is actually defining a function. So I'm just gonna define a new function and this function is gonna operate as a way to create new elements for that specific list. So the first thing that you wanna do is define what is gonna be the starting point or the first element of this new list. In my case, it's gonna be a record. So let's go ahead and choose this record that is gonna have two fields. The first one is gonna be the month because I need to know which month it's gonna be. And the first month is actually gonna be the month equals to zero, which is gonna have the base value of my salary. Now, the other field that this record needs is actually the salary field. Now, in this one, I'm gonna use the value 125. And this is just for testing purposes, just so I can see that it's equals to the one, the value that I have up here. So this is gonna be the starting point. This is what you wanna do. This is the starting point. Then you need to define when should this new elements of your uh, list, when they should be actually calculated. And now I'm actually using the month field, which has to be less than or equals to the source step. Now, don't forget that the source step is actually calculating how many rows my monthly increase uh, query has. So it's basically telling list.generate that this month needs to be less than or equals to number 12. So that's why I actually uh, change the data type of the month column in the monthly increase query from text to numeric. Now we have the first one, this one that I'm actually selecting, this is the first value of, or the first element of my new list. Next one is telling me when to operate or create new elements. And the third argument of this function is actually telling, uh, it's gonna tell Power Query how to create new elements. So each new element is gonna be a record and it's gonna have these two fields, month and salary. Now, the first field, which is gonna be month, is gonna be calculated this way. It's gonna be the value that I have right now, which is month, plus one. That's gonna give me the next month. And for salary, which is gonna be the other field that I need, is gonna calculate the current salary times one plus, and don't forget that I'm actually at the next month, so I can actually use that value to get the month record from the monthly increase query, which is gonna be doing a uh, table navigation. So this is table navigation right here. I'm gonna navigate through this table, the monthly increase, to get the month that is equals to the current month that I'm actually in, plus one, that's gonna give me the next month, just like we did over here. And now that I'm actually at that specific record of the next month, I can get the field that is called value. Now, the value, as you can see up here, is the one that has the increase. So that's what I'm actually using the value. Now let's go back to the list.generate. And up here, what I need to do now is simply close parentheses because all of this is in parentheses. And then close the square brackets. And last but not least, since we're still in the list.generate function, close the parentheses for the list.generate function. And just like that, I've created a new list that has 13 elements. Uh, it's the 12 that we know from the actual uh, monthly increase plus the, the actual first one that I created manually, which is called the month uh, equals zero salary equals to 125. Now, if we just navigate to the first one, we notice that it's equals to 137.5.
let's go ahead and, and just look at those numbers. The next one, which is month two, 137.5. Month three, 158. Let's go ahead and go to the month eight, which would be the ninth, 158.125. And then on the 9, 189.75. And just like that, we have created this new function uh, that can actually, or this new list that generates, we have actually established the logic that is creating a list of the future salaries that I actually want. Now, what I need to do is that I need to somehow make this a function so it can actually work for me. So we're going to be using. Uh, the new uh, standard way to create functions in Power Query. So the first thing that you want to do is find out what are going to be the variables of your function. Don't forget that if I change the base salary over here, 125, I change this to be, for example, 240, just like I did right here, then that's going to change the output of the whole list. So once you actually define the salary, you can actually get the list exactly how you want it. And that should be the only out, the only input that you need for this function. So let's go ahead and go to home, manage parameters, new parameters. I'm gonna name this my salary. It's gonna be a decimal number, and this is gonna be 240. Now this is my new parameter. And when I actually change this to be my salary, I can change this to be a function. So create function. And this is gonna be uh, salary effects. There we go. So whenever I actually make any type of changes to this function, is going to be reflected on the salary effects. Now, in the list of generate function, we only define first the initial state, uh, the actual way to create new elements and when to do it as a second parameter. We could have actually created a new uh, step for this uh, function, which could be each and this could be the actual output. For example, if I don't want to have this whole record, I can actually just change this to be, for example, hey, just give me the salary as the output. And that way, I can actually have this list of uh, the fields that I actually want. But since I do need each of those records, because I do need both fields in month and the salary, let's just leave it at this. That way, I can have the month and the salary. Now, I can go to my employees right here, go to add column, invoke custom function, and from here, function query, salary effects, salary effects, from another column name, and that's gonna be the salary. Now, this is actually a list. I can expand to new rows. There we go, there we go. We're almost there, and just like that, I have everything that I need. Do I need the the first month, the, the month zero? Maybe I need it so I can actually know what was my base salary. But if I don't need that, I can just filter this out and I'll have my information exactly how I want it. So I'm gonna rename this to be month and this one to be salary. Uh, yeah, we already have it. Uh, calculate it salary and there we go I'm gonna put this to be a decimal number and this is gonna be a whole number and just like that I've actually created the function uh, that I needed and I have the output that I needed with this simulation scenario now if I want this to be exactly like the one that we have up here I can filter this out to be uh, like this there we go so the salary is gonna be gone and I can actually just go to transform, go to the pivot column, there we go. And the values column is gonna be the calculated salary. And now, 
I have everything exactly uh, as I actually had it up here. So 110, 110, 110, 110. This is actually everything from 1 to 12, just like the one above. And that's how you create your own function uh, for less.generate. And then you add the uh, parameter or the variable uh, to your actual function. So if you need to make any changes, uh, you go to the new way, the new standard way of creating a function with Power Query, uh, where you need to define a new parameter. And if you ever need to make any changes, you just go ahead and do them up here. And that's it. Thank you.